Hello and welcome to another episode of Closing Deals and Heels. I am your host, Kayla Hodges, and this is the first episode that I'm recording where I get to officially say that I've hit the third floor of life. I'm 30 years old, 30, flirty, and thriving, and I am so incredibly blessed and honored for this past birthday. It's been one of my favorite birthdays I've ever had. I felt so loved. I got so many messages, and I just, I'm just incredibly grateful, including walking into my office today and receiving a gift from one of you guys to actually send me brownies and a beautiful letter and just like celebrating me as I just appreciate so much for the love and the compassion that I received. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, an uncomfortable subject for a lot of us. And I see so many women struggling in the area of love and the area of loving themselves and their relationships with partners. And, um, you know, I definitely don't know it all, but I have been through a lot of stuff in my life. I've loved, I've lost, I've had my heart completely broken into a million shattered pieces. I've loved so deeply. And I I noticed that, you know, even when I first started this podcast and started telling my story, I didn't tell the last bit of it before I started, um, you know, a big part of my healing journey as well as starting that company. And it was from a massive, like the most heart wrenching heartbreak I've ever experienced in my life. And I wanted to share a little bit of that story with you today and also give you the tools that you get to have in order for you to not cross your boundaries in your life. All of the areas of our life bleed into each other. And the way that you do one thing is the way that you do everything. So if you are having issues at your job, issues, you know, with your family, like they could be all blending in together. You could be having issues in your personal life and they blend into your job issues, you know, with the way that you communicate and they blend into like how you're showing up for yourself, your finances, um, the way you're taking care of your body. Like we're all connected. And I really truly believe that you showing up as a leader is you stepping up in every single area of your life, which includes love and relationships. I don't know, you know, where you're at right now in your journey right? I don't know your story. Maybe you are single, ready to mingle right now. Maybe you've been in a relationship for a long time. Maybe that relationship is thriving. It's the most epic love of your life. Maybe it's not as great as you want it to be. Maybe you're not respected the way that you get to be respected. Maybe you feel alone. Maybe you are in between people and you recently like are in heartbreak right now. Like I don't know your story, but I do know that one thing that you get to learn how to do is fully live in the moment and also be able to love yourself enough to pour into you. And uh, I don't know if you've ever felt like this, but have you ever felt like you lost yourself in love and relationships and with people and you've had to rebuild you, maybe you can relate a little bit um, when I say that, you know, life is like a balance, right? And I, sometimes I think we get co- so caught up in trying to be successful and trying to do work the right way and, and you know, feeling like we're failing or feeling like we're not good enough or whatever is coming up for you. And we get lost in the sauce and we don't realize that the people around us are so important. And if we were just to give our time and attention to people around us, we would truly make the world a better place. And I think that as a woman, it's important to understand how to love yourself. It's important to understand how to be loved and how to give love. Um, I, I, I preach that all the time. And I truly want you to be as happy as you possibly can be. And I've learned a lot on this subject. I studied a lot on this subject. And so uh, I just want to give the you this advice today because a lot of my girlfriends call me for it and um, I've learned a lot and I get to pour into you. So let's go back to the story. You ever felt like you found like the one you're like, oh, this is it. Like this is the one I'm so in love. Oh my God. And then they turned out not to be the one and it's infuriating. You know, I felt like I found the person that was supposed to be with forever when I moved to Miami 
And I, I met this person and I thought that they were absolutely incredible and epic and they would see me and, you know, I fell like so hard. I fell so hard in love with this person. My God, like I never had felt like this much love in my life. You know, I was just like, oh, just so over, head over heels, head over heels, right? And what I noticed with, about this person and why I was so excited to find this person is because I had waited such a long time to find a person. Before this, I had been single for three years. And um, if you've read, you know, some of my story or listened to some of my story, you know that I've been married at one point in my life. I was in a really abusive relationship. It really didn't serve me at all. And, um, you know, I had from that experience, a lot of trauma and a lot of healing that I got to do. And so going from a place where I was completely single, I was really, really upset. And I heard somebody tell me like, all you have to do, you know, to manifest your guy is that you need to write down every single thing that you've ever wanted in a guy. So I did that. I took the time and I wrote down on a piece of paper, every single thing that I wanted in a man, right? How tall he is, what he looks like, how much fun we have, how he treats me and just wrote all this stuff down about how, you know, his passions in life and just, uh, just going on and on and on, like kid in a candy store, writing every single thing down of what I wanted in a man. And I got to the end of that list. And this is a long time ago at this point. I got to the end of that list and I asked myself, I said, Kayla, are you the woman that's going to attract this man? And at the time I was not. At the time I looked at that list and I looked at that amazing, incredible man that I described and I was just like, man, like I wish I can get a guy like that to pay attention to me. I wish I could find a guy like that. Like that would be absolutely epic. And for you know years, I just spent time working on myself, personal development, reading, learning, absorbing, becoming self-aware, doing the work, doing the work, right? Like learning, learning, learning. And notice that during this time, like I really, um, would challenge masculine energy. And during this time as well, I found this book by Alison Armstrong. I highly recommend it called the queen's code. And in this book, she talks about frog farmers as her interpretation of this book, frog, frog farmers. And she talks about how, you know, like a woman finds a frog, she kisses him, he turns into a prince, they live happy, happily ever after. She said most women are frog farmers, which means that they find a really great guy and they turn them into frogs. I'm like, what? And she goes and describing in this incredible book, I don't want to ruin it to you, all the different things that women do to men to emasculate them. Or as women, whenever you are broke, broken in your feminine energy, and you are wounded feminine energy, you are normally really clingy, really needy, really insecure, and you're always trying to get a man to prove himself to you. And as I read this book, I cried during the whole thing because I realized that I did that. I remember, you know, one of my boyfriends in the past, I would constantly like try to like break up with him just to see him fight for me. <laughs> Now it seems so silly to me, right? But I, I would want him to prove to me that he loved me, prove to me that he cared about me, prove to me that he would fight for me and be with me and that he wanted me. I wanted that validation so much and I constantly like shut him down, constantly didn't praise him, constantly like made fun of him, you know, and I was just trying to be goofy and silly and super young at the time. But what I did is I turned him into a frog. And I realized as I look past my, my past relationships, I did that to a lot of guys, turning them into frogs. I was a great frog farmer and it didn't serve me whatsoever. I'll tell you that. As I read the book and I started learning about like how to talk to men, I found myself at another place where I realized that I had really never ever dated men. Never really dated, didn't really know what men are like. I would date the same guy over and over, narcissist, narcissist, narcissist. And um, I realized I never really dated. And so I got this really brilliant idea. 
And at the time I was really like hurt. I felt still like I would go to stores and I would get really triggered by people in random grocery stores. If a man bumped into me, I would go into like hyperventilation, start freaking out. And um, because I was still healing from all the trauma from my ex-husband. And so I got this idea. I'm like, what if I just went on a, like tons of dates and I learned how to date? And it was really uncomfortable for me. And this is also a super masculine thing to do, but I had five dating apps going out once and I had a template system in order for me to narrow down my research. So I would talk to somebody and ask them some first question and then some question about what he does. I wanted to be with somebody that's an entrepreneur um, so they can think like bigger like me. Um, and I would just ask certain questions to kind of narrow down my prospect <laughs> to see if there's somebody that I wanted to date. And I went on over, over a hundred dates within a year. I went on so many dates, so many first dates, right? I think it was definitely more than that. I went on a lot of dates and, um, you know, I think maybe three guys got past a third date, but most of everyone, it was just one day they would annoy me and I would go home and cry. Um, <laughs> or, um, some of these dates took too long. So then they became coffee dates go. And I'm like, Oh, I have a meeting. Really nice to meet you. Like, okay, block. Right. Um, <laughs> and it was so interesting doing this process because I had never learned how to date before. And I just started going and, you know, some of the date I would go and this guy's like weird, you know, and I didn't want to be rude. So I'm like, how can I just like sit here and, you know, make this guy feel special for the day? Like oh, I'm going to act actually interested in what he's saying. And I did this really incredible thing, which was listening. And you as a woman, you have the ability to listen, right? To listen, to understand. And one of the things that I read in this book was that when you ask a man a question, after he responds, instead of interjecting or saying whatever else is coming up in your mind, be quiet. Because most men don't have the experience of what it's like to communicate, to, to have the space to say what's going on. And so they normally stop themselves short of fully explaining what's coming up for them. And so I would ask a question and they would start talking and I would be quiet. I'm like shaking my head, yes, uh-huh. Like, and they would keep going. That was a game changer for me. I realized that these guys would talk and talk and talk. At the same time, you know, I would really like to talk to guys that were like really advanced in business and they were doing well for themselves. And I would ask them advice on something and they would just talk and talk and talk. And I'm like, huh. And, um, you know, I, I was doing this and, and then I, I, I guess I got really good and I had to stop this whole thing because I had three guys in one week tell me that they loved me. And I was like, whoa, what the heck just happened? These guys are crazy. Like we've been on two dates, three dates, like weird. Like, okay, I'm going to shut this down, shut this down. And they would tell me the same thing. I've never met anyone like you. Like, this is so crazy. I'm like, what the heck am I doing to make these guys all, all freak out? And so I was analyzing my data, right? I had a whole spreadsheet of everything that was going on. That's how my brain thinks. I'm real weird. And um, I realized that these guys never had somebody really see them. And we all have the superpower as women to really see somebody, to make them feel important, to allow them space to talk. Like uh, it was absolutely incredible. And I'm like, okay, this is a superpower and I need to use it for good. Right, and shut this thing down um, and just wait, you know, just wait, just wait, just wait. And um, that was a really interesting skill that I, I got to learn and I got to adapt about like how to talk to and communicate with men. Cause I'm like, the next time I find this guy, like I'm not gonna mess it up. You know, I'm not gonna turn him into a frog. I'm gonna see him, I'm gonna honor him and I'm gonna make him feel like a king, right? Like I just want him to feel powerful and know that I'm here. And, you know, when I met this guy in Miami, right, I, I fell so hard, I fell so hard in love. And I thought it was every single thing that I've ever wanted. He was everything on my list, every single thing on my list. He was all of it. I was so excited. I was super happy. You know, um, we started, you know, dating, he asked me to be his girlfriend and one thing that was not good with our relationship is that he liked to party, right? And I was partying with him. 
I was having a great ass time. We are going out every weekend, right? There was lots of clubs, lots of raves, lots of everything that goes on in that world. And my responsibility level like dropped to zero. At one point, my daughter was failing school. She had to go back to Houston for six months, live with my sister, super hard time in my life. And I just felt like it was the first time I ever got to be an adult in my world. And I just partied my ass off. I, you know, and with him, like we were just partying, have the best time, you know, saying you're the love of my life, you're everything, you know, talking about our kids' names, like so much stuff was happening. And the one thing that I realized is that I started crossing my boundaries for love. I wanted to be loved so bad by this guy that even some of the things that made me feel uncomfortable, like I would do it because I loved him. I really, that's what I was telling myself, right? I'm like, okay, you know, we want to go out to this place. This place doesn't make me feel really comfortable, you know, but I do it anyways. Um, you know, there was stuff that, you know, um, I'm going to talk fully openly here on, but you know, stuff where he would want things that I normally wouldn't be okay with. And I would say yes, you know, cause I loved him. It would still like hurt me. And I'm like, okay. There was just so much stuff that I felt like I was constantly breaking my boundaries for in order to be worthy of this dude, in order to be loved fully by this dude. And um, man, the last kind of straw on this was that he tells me one day, he's like, hey, I'm moving to another country. And I lost it. You know, he told me he was moving to another country. And I'm like, okay, like, are you asking me to come with you? Like, what are we doing? What's the plan? He's like, no, I'm leaving. You're going to stay here. And I'm going to leave for only three months. And I'm like, okay, like, that's fine. So he leaves. I find out that, you know, after he left, which driving him to the airport, I remember it was like one of the lowest days of my life. I laid in bed for two days after that, like crying my eyes out every single day. Like I felt like I just had somebody die. It was the worst feeling that I have ever felt. I didn't eat. Like I was like, was so depressed. And then I find out that after he leaves, moves to another country that he was uh, sleeping with other girls there. And I find this out after I go to come visit him and I like find like condoms in his room. And um, even in that moment, I remember him looking at me and I could feel how guilty he felt and how sad he felt. And I just hugged him and I was like, it's okay. Like everything's okay. Like what crazy thing was I right? thinking in my mind where I was just like, it's okay. I love you. Everything's fine. Like, geez, man. Like, I don't know what was going on through my mind. And I just felt my heart so broken by the situation. And I was so confused. I was like, how can somebody tell me that they love me, that they're the love of my life? Uh, we were talking about like our kids' names and all this stuff. And then they do this to me. Like, how would that be possible? And I was in the lowest point that I had ever been. And so I signed up to go to a four month long trauma intervention and I was broken at that point. I showed up to that event with 120% intention of please try to heal me. Like I will do anything. I'll do anything that you say. Like I was the most depressed. I felt super disconnected from my daughter, super disconnected from myself. I was super irresponsible. I was reckless, out of control. I hated who I had become. I wasn't a leader. I wasn't showing up for myself. And man, like inside out, like I hated who I had become. I hated me. And when I showed up to that event and poured my heart out and did every single thing that they asked me to do, I like made a decision to kill my ego, made a decision to kill off that old version of Kayla that was not serving her whatsoever. The party girl, the, the girl that was reckless, the girl that was irresponsible, like decided that that version of me got to die and that I get to step into my leadership, you know, called him at that event, broke up with him at that event. You know, we were still off and on for months because I would end up running into him in Miami. <laughs> oh my God. I was, I thought that he was out of town and end up running into him. I, and I would always think to myself, maybe this is fate. Maybe this is fate. 
what I realized at this time and I was so pissed off about it was like this guy is everything on my list I was so mad so mad about what had happened and like how dare someone hurt me and be so selfish and be so (sighs) egotistical and willingly to hurt me for their own pleasure you know and I just I, I I had such a place in my heart of like is love even gonna exist is it even gonna be real like is it even possible for me like would somebody actually really love me and be selfless with their love like I was with him you know and from that time I just took took massive amounts of time to work on me and heal me Every single day I went to the water and I wrote letters and I would bawl my eyes out trying to forgive this guy, trying to break the cords, the energy with this guy, you know, I would, and I would hate doing it, but I knew that it was going to help heal me every single day. I would write a letter to him. so mad at him. I write a letter to God, help me. And then I would like ask, I forgive you. I'm free. I forgive you when I'm free. I would yell in pillows. I would scream. I would cry. And I just felt like every single part, there was like this piece of me that was still broken, still broken, still broken. And I made a decision. I'm like, oh man, like I don't get to be that little girl anymore. What I realized is that when I attracted that man into my life, that's the moment where I sold everything that I owned, that I was completely broke, that I started all the way over. That was in one of the lowest places of my life, right? When I met this guy, when I attracted him into my life. And I didn't realize after all this time that the woman that I am today was very, very, very different than the woman that attracted this man in. It was very different. I had outgrown the person that would attract that person. And so I, I decided that I was going to do the one thing that I knew I can control. And I highly recommend you to do it as well, which was learn how to date myself. Number one, heal from this. And number two, date me every day, working on healing, working on growing, doing the modalities, doing the tools, working on me. And then number two, dating myself. I was like, I'm going to date me better than anyone's ever dated me before. I'm going to love me. I would go and write myself letters. My dearest Kayla, the sun rises and it glows on your skin. It makes you look even more beautiful than yesterday. I'm like writing myself this romantic love notes and poems. And I would take myself to dinner and I would buy myself a necklace and shoes. And oh my gosh, I would just spoil me and I would love me. And I would like, you know, get my lotion, rub it all over my skin. I'm like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. And I was just like, sounded so silly to me, but I did it. And then I looked at my list, my list of every single thing that I wanted in a man. And I was like, man, time to add a lot more stuff to my list. So I added faithful to me on there. And then I started writing about his habits. I'm like, he wakes up at four to 6 a.m. He doesn't party. He's a leader. You know, he cherishes me, cherishes my daughter. You know, we, we do this together. We speak on stages together. Whenever this comes out, this is how he handles it. And I started writing down on his habits habits, who he is as a person, his character, how he shows up for himself, how he shows up for the people around him. And I just started adding and adding and adding and adding of who this man got to be. Talked about our love together. That gets to be epic. It gets to be one of a kind, you know, and just started writing it all down. And, um, you know, I did that for over a year, long time, you know, I was waiting, waiting, waiting. I remember being at a conference and I was listening to this woman, her name's Jen. I think it's got trip. Jen, she's super awesome. Talking on stage and she's telling us about this list. And she's like, yeah, I wrote the list and all the stuff. I'm like, yeah, I've done that twice. It doesn't work so far. And she says that every day when she comes home, that she talks to her husband. And that one was interesting for me. I'm like, okay, she talks to her husband every day. Interesting. So the next night I'm getting out to go to dinner with my girlfriends and I'm dressing in this beautiful black dress and I'm putting on my heels and I'm getting in the mirror and I'm putting on my lipstick and I'm like, you're one sexy bitch. And then it dawned on me and I was like, oh, wait, wait. I'm like, baby, I can't wait to meet you. I'm so excited to be able to kiss you. You should see me right now. I look so beautiful. I can't wait to spend nights like this with you. I can't wait to see you. So grateful for you. 
And I would do a little prayer. I'm like, God, thank you for molding my husband right now. Thank you for making him the man he gets to be. Thank you for helping him find me. God, help him find me and keep him safe. So excited. And I would just start talking and talking about this guy and talking to him. I'd walk in the house. I'm like, honey, baby, I'm home. I've had such a long day. Oh my God, you look so good. And I would just talk to him. (laughs) And what Jen was saying is that this was really good because any man that came and talked to her and asked her on dates, she'd be like, oh, you're not my husband. Like I talk to him every day. You're not it. You're not him, you know? And, um, it's been a really interesting, beautiful healing process of loving yourself, pouring into yourself, honoring you, you know, and, um, it's been really cool. Um, my relationship's private right now, but I got to meet a guy like nine months or so ago. And it's been one of the most epic, awesome love stories of my life. I've never, ever been seen so well and been poured into so much and having somebody like, I can't explain it. Like I have always loved somebody more than they loved me in every relationship that I've been in. Like you could see it in my eyes. Like a man, I'm just like, Oh, I would do anything for this person. Like, like dripping in love. Right. And for the first time in my life, like that's how I feel back where somebody's looking at me. Like I walk on water looking at me, like they would do anything for me that they love me with the entire essence of their being. I'm like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. And the one thing that I can tell you is that when your visions are aligned, it's so much easier. I think back to my past relationship of what I wanted and what he wanted, right? I'm like, I want to travel the world. I want to impact millions of people's lives. I want to be on stages. I want to pour into people. I want to transform people from the inside out. Like I want to show up and I, I take responsibility for that. And I want to do it. And I want to come up online and, oh my gosh, there's somebody out there. I need to show up online today because there's a woman out there that needs me today. And I need to show up for her. And, you know, my ex like wanted to help people as well, but wanted to be more low key, wanted to travel, you know, wanted to like do his thing, more solitude, didn't want to post as much online, you know, and you like didn't support my vision on like a scale of like, how can I help you do that? I see so many people that are in relationships that are not happy and it, it breaks my heart because every single moment in our life is a gift right? Like you don't know when your last day is. And so many people around you are just waiting for you to tell them that you love them or that they're important to you or to see them. What would it be like if you, you know, talk to your husband or your boyfriend today and just acknowledge the crap out of them to see them, to listen to them. Hey baby, like, oh my gosh, you are doing so incredible. You work so freaking hard. I'm so proud of you. I see you. You're so hot, sexy, and smart. Like, I just love being around you. I love spending time with you. I just think that you're absolutely epic. You're everything. I just am so grateful for you being in my life and showing up for them that way. Men love to be praised by you and love to be seen by you. They freaking love it. What would it look like if you actually saw them? All they're doing is trying to get your approval and trying to show up for you. And like giving them that validation is everything that they need, right? Men, when they, you know, build their kingdom, that's another Alison Armstrong reference. She talks about men being in four categories. There's um, knights, right? A knight going around looking for adventure, like exploring, knighting around, right? And then you have, princes who normally are building their kingdom, building the kingdom, building the kingdom, building the kingdom, right? They don't have time to like pour all the time into the queen, right? They're building the kingdom. Then you have the kings that finally built the kingdom that are ready to have their queen arrive. And I guess that's three types, not four. And I feel like as women, sometimes we get so upset with the princes that are building. We're like, pay attention to me, do me, see me, hang out with me when they're on a purpose to build a kingdom for you. Men with purpose, men like that are going like after what they want. You cannot get in the way of that. As soon as you make it about you and not about them, like they're going to lose themselves and then therefore they lose you. You don't want a man that is only worried about you. You want him worried about 
what he's creating in life, the vision that he's trying to do, the man that he's trying to become, right? And when you see a man that is going after something, that is building something, that is, you know, the prince building the kingdom and that he's trying to become something more, the easiest way for him to become that king is for you to look at him and be like, you're building the kingdom. You're doing a great job. I see you. You're working so hard and allowing him to do so. Give him the space. Versus nagging him, why don't you do this with me and this with me? No, like he's doing all this normally for you. Sometimes we get in our own damn way and I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of seeing it. It's so, it sucks. I ruin so many relationships by doing this. Like don't be that person that does it too. You're worthy of having an epic, absolutely incredible dropping love. Like you're so worthy of being able to have a love that consumes you. And that's absolutely incredible. And the thing is, is that love can never be taken away from you because you are love. You can't have yourself being taken away from you. You are love. And if you don't have a love that consumes you right now, what would it look like for you to be the love that consumes you? What would it look like for you to write yourself letters and you to look in the mirror and tell yourself how incredible you are? You sometimes are your worst enemy. What would it look like for you to show up for you for once? Be there for you, see you, honor you, pour into you. You can't attract into your life what you're not. I would never be able to attract uh, a king into my life without being the queen that can attract him. Instead of worrying about the outside, why don't you worry about the inside? If you're already in a relationship right now, what does the next level of your relationship look like for you? How can you show up more powerfully? How can you guys sit down as a team and talk about what the next vision for your relationship is? If you are not growing, you are dying. Progress equals happiness. And as women, we're more than just trying to figure out a sales job. Your life is freaking important. You are important. And you deserve to have love in your life. I love love. Love is great. And uh, a mentor told me once, would you rather have your heart bruised or one locked in a box? Because after everything that I've ever been through, I definitely could be the person that locks my heart away that doesn't want to get vulnerable, that doesn't want to open their heart up in order for it to get hurt again, that doesn't want to step out on the sidelines of of the unknown and what could possibly be there, that would want to go after date after date after date after they all suck. But I'd rather have my heart bruised. i rather love and lose than not love at all. I don't want to die alone with cats. <laughs> I don't. i rather wear my heart on my sleeve and do every single thing possible to fail and fail and fail again in order to finally figure it out. And that's in more than one area of my life. That's in more than just love, but that's in my sales process too and how I show up as a leader and how I show up for the women in my life, right? You get to show up for you. And regardless if we're talking about sales or we're talking about your love life, like it is a journey learning a skill. Learning how to love yourself is a skill. Learning how to love others properly is a skill. Learning how to sell and make money is a skill. And all of them require practice, daily practice, practicing loving yourself, practicing learning how to sell and make money, practicing getting a little bit better because what's neglected will eventually die. We went on a whole rant today. I hope that's okay. I hope that you received something out of this. I don't know again where you're in your journey or what you've been through. And I know that sometimes it's hard and you're like, oh, but Kayla, this and this has happened to me and this and this has happened to me. Like I completely get it. I also know that you're worthy of not being alone. I also know that you're worthy of really finding happiness. I know that you are enough. You are so enough. You are so worthy. You're so powerful. You get to be loved. Love cannot be taken away from you. You don't get to be mean to yourself. You don't get to get frustrated with you. We get to shake it off, move forward, pour that love back into you, start again. Because there's somebody out there that um, would have a wonderful opportunity of what it would be like to be seen by you and be loved by you. And the people that are in your life right now, what would it look like to step up on another level? What would it really look like? What would it feel like? I'm really curious to hear comments on this episode. 
I'm really curious about what's coming up for you. So comment below, you know, your story, what's coming up for you, how you show up. If you have any questions, I read every comment and uh, make sure you're following this podcast. Send it to a girlfriend that you love. Give me some ideas for what you want us to talk about on here. I love you. I honor you. I thank you. Thank you for giving me the platform to speak passionately about things that I care about. I hope that they really serve you. And I hope that my vulnerability and my stories only give you an example of, um, you know, my realness and my authenticity and me trying to be true and raw and open. We get to stand in this together. You get everything that you want, babe. I love you. I honor you. I see you. Thank you so much. See you in the next episode.